Hey everybody, welcome back in. My name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we're going to be talking about retopology. It's something I haven't really covered on this channel before, and I had a really good example to kind of work through and explain some of the tools that we can use for retopology. And I wanted to give it a go and just make a video for you guys. So without further ado, if you are familiar with what I've been doing recently, I've been kind of rebuilding all of the Bionicles and from Lego in 3D just because it felt like a fun project. Uh, and so for this example, we're going to be retopologizing some of the 3D content that is pulled from the BrickLinked software. So if you're confused on how I got to that point, there's a video on my Patreon. You're welcome to take a look. Everyone who signs up to support me on Patreon gets a credit at the end of every one of my videos, as well as access to free models, free downloads, and access to exclusive videos that are only on Patreon. So let's go ahead and jump on in the video and work through this. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be working on an asset that came from the BrickLinked software where you can kind of build your own Legos in virtual space. Um, part of this project has been converting all of this BrickLink data into usable quad topology. So going from something triangulated like this to something nice and quad like this. Uh, this just kind of helps if I wanted to do like deformations or anything like that. And it really does help with like sub D modeling. So if I want to really like get in close and get these parts nice and sharp, I can do that because I can just subdivide and subdivide until, you know, my computer can't handle it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just hide all this stuff. And we're gonna look at just this. This is what we're focusing on today. So the mask we're working on today is Pohatu. If you're familiar with Bionicle, it's a really fun thing from my childhood, but this is gonna be kind of our example. So the reason we'd wanna kind of turn this into quad topology is because it's triangulated. So we can't really smooth this. If I go and I smooth this, you can see it breaks apart. This, These models are just not really conducive to like actual use. So we wanna make them into something that is conducive to actual use. And so a lot of the ways to do that, or one of the easiest ways to do that is to retopologize it. Some of the other pieces I ended up remodeling and just making myself, but this is kind of how I handled the masks because it's a little bit of an easier process to get these done. So right off the bat, we can see that we have a lot of kind of curvature going on here, which we'll have to try to match, but we also have a lot of sharp edges. So these are the things that we're gonna to have to kind of think about when we're doing this retopology. So what we're gonna do first is, I don't like the material that these come in with by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slap the default gray on there so I can actually see. So let's go ahead and start quadding this out. So in order to get started with retopology, we're going to be using what's called Quadra. Quadra is in your modeling toolkit all the way down here at the bottom. So we're going to be using Quadra. So when you start off with Quadra, we can click it and you notice that you can't really do anything with it. Uh, it's because you have to set this up a little bit. So we're going to turn that off, Q escape. So we have our model here. We need to turn our model into a live surface. You can do this one of two ways. You can right click and go to make live, or you can go up here and you see this little magnet tool, make live. So either way works, doesn't really matter. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on symmetry. So we need to know which axis we're working in. We know that we are currently working, we're working in the world X. And then we're going to go to target, or we're going to go to quad draw, hit quad draw. And so here now we can start drawing what we're actually going to be using. So generally I like to start in the center. This one's going to be a little bit different because we have this hole down here, but we're still going to focus on starting in the center. So you can see that we can just click and kind of drag a point. So I'm going to drag my point there and drag a point there. And then we need to drag some center points. So they will snap automatically to the center as long as you're in symmetry. And so we're good there. So we have those three points. So this kind of lets us know like, this is where our shape is going to start. So I, I did kind of mess up a little bit because this is going to go straight across. So we're going to hold shift and you can see it now kind of highlights the faces. And we're going to click and that's going to create our first set of faces. So the next thing I want to do is just kind of grab these and pull these down because we're working in symmetry, it's gonna do everything on one side that it's doing on the other side. And that's pretty good. So the next thing we can do is we can go up here, we can click and we can click and we can shift click. So that's going to allow us to just recreate those every single time. And so this is really helpful for like going in here, selecting a corner, click, and we can do one up here, click. And all I'm doing each time is holding shift and clicking. So that is kind of the gist on creating first kind of faces for our retopology, but there's some tools to make it a little bit faster. So one of those is tab. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna hold tab, and we're gonna just extrude this down. So you can see that with tab held, we can grab this and we can just kind of change shape however we want to. And we can do this in either direction. 
This is also going to allow this to snap to each corner. So anywhere that there's a face that it can actually snap to, it's going to. And so this makes it incredibly quick to actually go through and retopologize our models. And so we want to make sure we're just kind of matching that. And a lot of the times you'll be doing this process for high poly sculpts from like ZBrush or any other sculpting application. And the process will be different for every single model. So if you're working with like a human character or some other some other character that has like facial deformation, you're gonna have to follow certain topology rules. Thankfully with this one, I don't really care. We don't really have to deform anything. So for me, this is just kind of recreating this in a quad poly type of way. And we're not really worried about creating any deformation or anything like crazy. Really, we wanna make sure we're just maintaining these shapes. Okay, so go back. So we're gonna grab these. Oop. Extrude these. And I'm gonna show you guys a new thing here. So this is another tool to just kind of make things easier. So you can see how this didn't snap really well. Sometimes if they're kind of phasing through the mesh, they won't snap. So you wanna be a little careful with how you handle that. Um, but I'm noticing here that there's more curvature here than I have. So I've essentially kind of reduced this area and I don't necessarily wanna do that. So what I can do is I can hold control and this is gonna give me an edge cut tool. So I'll just cut a new loop in there and you can see how that kind of matches that up and makes it a little bit better. And so thankfully we're pretty good there. So we're just gonna go all the way down here, down here. And then I know this is kind of a flatter surface, so I'm not super stressed about it. And then here I'm gonna just start matching up with this circle. I don't need it to be perfect, because again, this is going to be a sub-D model, so I can just subdivide it however I want to. Um, but this is also where I kind of have to decide how many faces I want this to be made up of. So what I'll do is I'll control click and then we're gonna go ahead and just extrude these now and kind of place them. So we're gonna try to just maintain the shape that this object already has without trashing it too badly. So right here, I'm gonna have to add an extra loop just because there's nothing to support there. So we're losing a lot of shape, but really we're just kind of trying to maintain this as best as possible. Uh, let's go here. And you can get really like hyper fixated on this if you want to, just depends on like how how much you're trying to do with the project or what your requirements for that project are. And so you can see everything kind of snaps. Sometimes with this, it'll snap to the interior and that's kind of a pain, but we can just kind of work with that. So one of the other tools is the relax tool. So up here, if I want to just kind of relax this stuff a little bit, we can hold shift and just relax our edge loops. This is a really good way to kind of, to kind of clean up what you've been doing. So if you have an area that's like super dense, we can relax it out and just kind of like clean it up. In fact, we can do a little example of that here. So I'm going to hold tab. This is another part of this tool. So you can hold tab and you can see how we can draw this. You can change this by double clicking your tool setting. It's going to open up this window and we're just going to change our quad strip width down to like, we'll just do like 72. That should be fine. So you can see how that gives us a smaller one. And so what I can do is I can grab here and this is kind of tricky when you draw. So when you're drawing, you want to make sure that it's facing outward. That way we can just kind of drag up and this is good for like quick retopology. You're going to end up having to like really sit here and refine this stuff. But the nice thing is, is that we can just kind of extrude that and you can just work from here. The only problem with the, the drawing thing is that it doesn't necessarily snap super easily. So you kind of have to do it yourself. So we can like draw out this and then come back and it'll kind of auto snap the stuff. So this is really how it kind of comes down to like the manual rework that you're going to have to do. But you can see how using these tools like kind of in combination can get us a really fast result. Uh, this is obviously not what I'm going to use. I'm, I'm going to delete this, but this is a nice kind of use case to show the relax tool where we can just kind of relax these edge loops a little bit and it'll really kind of just maintain our edge flow and just kind of clean things up a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and delete all this because we don't want it. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to look in here. So we have this like loop, right? And so we could go in here 
and drag each one in and just like painstakingly do that, but there is a better way to do that. So the next thing we can do is we want to kind of extrude an entire loop. And so because this isn't exactly a loop, we have this, it's gonna end kind of at a weird point. So we can extrude multiple faces at once. And so this one's a little finicky, but you can hold tab and then middle mouse button and it'll extrude a bunch of faces at one time. It just gets a little bit convoluted when you go a little too far. So I tend to just do this in pieces. Uh, it's also not super perfect. It doesn't follow symmetry at all. So it can be a bit of a pain, but it is kind of a quicker way to get some of this stuff set up. If you don't mind a little bit of manual rework. But thankfully symmetry just continues to work afterwards. So it's not really a huge deal. The other thing that I just like to do for these is I will just honestly click a point, click a point, shift click, and just rebuild the faces real quick. It can be a little time consuming, but it's not the it's not the end of the world. Topology, retopology and UVs are two of the things that you will probably spend most of your time doing. And you can see one of the issues that we just had here is that our symmetry is broken. So we have to go in and manually add these, which is not great because it's also adding them to the other side. So we're kind of creating a non-manifold geo and so we don't want to do that. So I don't really recommend super often using that tool uh, unless you're not working in symmetry. If you're not working in symmetry, go for it. Like it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I do find it just easier just to click, click, shift. Sometimes you just got to figure out where everything's kind of linking. And it's honestly just, it's, it's a little bit faster than having to like finagle everything and get it all working again. Move that up a little bit. And you can see just like that, we're done. So not really the hardest thing in the world to deal with. We're gonna go ahead and link these up. I think, let's see, pull this in. And we're just trying to kind of focus on what it is we need to do topology wise here. So I know I need to add another loop. Uh, that's gonna take care of that. The other thing is, is that if you have enough connecting faces near each other, you can shift click and without dragging or adding any points, it'll just add them automatically. So we'll do that and we'll do that. And so we have our nice quad topology for that hole. And then we can just kind of continue working on from here. Some of the other tools that we can do is we can do some edge loop moves. So if we need to, if we have like a whole edge loop here, so let's build this out real quick. We'll pull this up. Okay, so we have this edge loop here. Maybe we don't want this here necessarily. We can control shift and middle drag, and we can actually drag and move the entire loop itself. So if we need to shift it up, if we need to shift it down, side to side, whatever we need to do, um, we're able to do that with, again, control shift and middle mouse drag. So let's say we make a we make a face that we don't want necessarily. So we got this. We didn't want to do that for example's sake. So what we can do is we can just hover over it, hit delete. The other thing we can do is we can control shift click and that'll also delete it. So there's two ways to delete faces. I usually just use delete because it doesn't really change anything, but there's just two ways to, two ways to kind of handle it. And so we're going to finish this off up here. Just make sure we get this going. And so this is where I have a little bit of a change that I need to make. So I've got some geometry up here that again, just kind of, I need to add additional flow to this. So I'm gonna control click, add an edge loop. That's gonna go through straight through to the bottom. It's not gonna interfere with the circle cause it's kind of out of bounds for it. And then we're gonna just drag up, drag up, drag across. And the important thing here is to make sure that we're adding as many faces to the top as we are the bottom because we don't want to have issues when we get to the back of this to kind of combine everything. And then again, we can just kind of click, click, shift, boom. It seems tedious at first, because it is, um, but eventually you'll get much faster at this. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult too to get some of these faces to align. Like you can see I'm having a little bit of an issue there because generally they need to be in view of each other for the software to actually pick it up properly. And this one just for whatever reason is just not wanting to work. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just delete that point. I'll just drag this and I'll redo this myself because it just makes a little bit more sense to just manually do it. 
And then I can continue adding my dots up here and continuing to extrude this inwards basically. Cool, so that's a pretty good basic overview of retopology and how it works. This isn't really meant for overall like retopology an entire character like we would usually use this tool for, but this is a good way to just kind of get familiar with the tool itself. Since I've seen a lot of people struggle with trying to figure out how to get Quadra to work, how to get it activated on a live surface and how to actually work with it in symmetry. So I hope this video was super helpful for you. And if you learned something, please make sure you like, comment, share, uh, and let me know, do you enjoy using quad draw is it your favorite thing in the world or do you absolutely hate working with retopology let me know in the comments i'm always interested but we're at the end of the video now so thank you so much for watching i appreciate it remember you can get access to all sorts of free stuff on my patreon if you subscribe as a supporter as well as getting your name in the credits as a producer this is both the best way to support me and the channel and what i do as well as getting yourself access to stuff that i don't normally share outside of youtube and my other social media so thanks again for watching i appreciate you being here and i will see you all in the next video Thank you.